in today's video, I'm going to take you through how you can easily and simply start building AWS architecture diagrams. I'm going to be doing this today in my favorite platform, which is Miro. Uh, so let's get to it and get building. So uh, we're building in Miro today, and we're going to start building out a AWS architecture diagram. We're just going to focus on this video of starting with a very simple diagram. Now, what we're going to need to do uh, when you start off with uh, the platform is you're going to need to probably look at one thing, which is setting the scale of your Miro board. So funnily enough, over on this side of the screen, you're going to see that there is this percentage indicator in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. What we can do is actually set this to 100%, and that's basically scaling everything that is uh, going to be built to be that default size. Just makes things a lot easier when it comes to working with Miro. Next up, we're going to want to access Miro's AWS shape packs. Now to do this, it's actually very simple. Come over to our left-hand menu, and we're gonna see diagramming shapes. By default, when you come into your account, um, and this isn't available on the free tier, but if you have a pre-existing paid account with Miro, you're gonna have access to more advanced shapes. So by default, there'll be some basic shapes here. You have the ability to obviously browse and upload your own custom shapes. But what I'm gonna do here is come into our Manage Shapes section. And depending on which cloud you're using, uh, I love AWS and do a lot of my workloads on AWS but you'll have access to all of the other clouds. So whether you're working with Azure, uh, doing something on GCP, um, or maybe you're playing with Kubernetes on AWS, uh, you've got the ability to turn those on here. In this case, I am going to enable AWS from the left-hand menu here. Um, what I can then do is actually select that. And the great thing that Miro does is it provides you some pre-existing templates. So feel free to make use of those. Uh, we can go and preview them or use them. And then you can see what's involved in all of the shapes that are now being unlocked. Now, to get up and running with building this simple tier application that we're going to create, I just need to close off this view. And I can very quickly start building out. Um, now, I can either obviously navigate through the menu here to find the different uh, views that I'm looking for. So we've got, for example, our AWS cloud, um, we've got a region, etc. Or I can actually start filtering if I was looking for EC2 instances, for example, I can very quickly just search for those and see my auto scaling EC2 instances here. Um, in this case, we're going to start off our AWS diagram typically with an account. So which account this workload is happening in. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to simply drag in my AWS. Uh, I'm going to start, I guess, with uh, an AWS account. Um, so again, you could search here and you could just type in account or I can see one here. So typically your AWS account, you're going to have a name for that account and it probably is going to have a numeric value that uh, you're going to be using. So you can either name this uh, just alphanumerically or you can uh, give it just the digits or at the end of the day, it depends what you're going to be using this diagram for. Um, so in this case, we'll just call it AWS account name. Now, the cool thing with Miro's shapes is that they actually scale uh, and work as containers for your diagram. So in this case, what I can see is I can drag this out, uh, zoom in and out and uh, very quickly adapt this diagram. So next up, we're going to need a region. So I can simply drag a region into my diagram here. And again, what you can see is I've added that region into the diagram. I can give it a name if I want, but you'll see as I move the parent container of the account, the region is moving with it. Uh, so after we've added in our region, typically we're going to need to have a VPC. Uh, so we can go in this view here and see uh, one here that's going to reference uh, our VPC. Um, and in this case, we can just search in the menu VPC. Nothing is coming up in the grouping. In that case, we can come up with more of a generic uh, container for this. Um, so let's have a look at uh, typically these things being... Uh, let's have a generic... Nope, VPC here, virtual private cloud. So there we go. We can drag that into our view. Next, we're typically going to be looking at having an availability zone. 
So in our case, that availability zone um, is going to be what we're looking at, for example, with the different um, setups and uh, accounts that we're not, or regions. So, so we're going to choose our uh, availability zone. I'm going to throw that in here, and we can give this a name. So this availability zone could be, for example, uh, EU West 1. Um, or we could take the spaces out there. And this could be where our work is going to be happening. And we can go and obviously uh, adjust the sizings of this. Um, and if I want to make my diagram a little bit more easier to manage, I can drag this out, start making use of the space on this infinite canvas. So here's my EU West 1. And I'm going to drag that out. Uh, next, after creating that uh, availability zone, I'm probably going to need a public subnet in there. Uh, so we can uh, bring one of these into our view. Again, I can scale it for the needs that I need in this account. And I might uh, also then be thinking about the instances that I'm going to be running within that subnet. So in this case, this is where I can search for things like EC2 and simply drag my EC2 into my view here. Now, probably we're going to have, obviously, this facing uh, the internet. So we're probably going to need an internet gateway. Uh, so we can type in internet gateway. We can see the internet gateway, VPC internet gateway. So again, we can go and add this to our diagram, start describing uh, how we're going to get access out to the internet. Now, we want to potentially do some fault tolerance or disaster recovery and have some uh, uh, load balancing probably across different environments here. So very quickly, I can actually duplicate my diagram just by highlighting it and come in here and actually maybe change this to uh, a different value. So we could have uh, this between EU West 1 and EU West 2. And uh, what we're going to then not be looking to put in is probably some load balancing. So let's go in and look for a load balancer uh, so we've got an elastic load balancer here, and we could throw that in the middle. So very quickly, you can see that I am building out my architecture, uh, and I've got everything grouped beautifully, uh, and it's been made really simple within Miro. Um, another great thing is that uh, these, uh, when doing this in Miro, this is a live diagram. So I can actually go and embed this board in uh, other tools that we may be using, such as Confluence uh, or Jira and so on. Um, or I can also just go in and choose to export this uh, as an image um, or even go and throw this into a frame. So here is a frame that I have. And this could be our target architecture. And with this, I could go and uh, decide to go and export this as an image or copy it as an image to another platform or export this as a PDF. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, if you have any questions, comments or thoughts that uh, I can help answer, please feel free to uh, throw them in the comments. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, give me a like and a subscribe.